Today I'm going to examine C major scale and contrary motion. First thing to do is refresh the fingering. What is the fingering of C major? And when you go up three octaves, because we will be doing three octaves in contrary motion, which is the absolute limit because you'll go off the keyboard otherwise, um, you want to make sure that in the transit of your thumb, that the thumb is very relaxed and that the arm really is taking the thumb under. I like to pantomime a lot where I silently watch what I do. You can see that the thumb also advances a little ahead of itself, but my arm is really taking my thumb along. I'm playing very quickly to show you that you don't see me going back and forth every time my thumb comes under, or which, which is called a shift. You don't see me going with the elbows out and all kinds of noisy motions of, of the hand and, or the arm. So the silent practice is very good because I kind of track how this is happening. Coming back, you loop around, and the thumb comes out a little ahead of itself, notice. You have different tunnels here. You have the two, three tunnel, you have the thumb coming under, then you have a two, three, four tunnel, you have the thumb under, a two, three tunnel, thumb under. So that's a pattern. Now if you ch choose to do some of these blocks, which are a good idea, you don't want to stick your into the two, three and stay there, stuck in there, because that's not what happens normally when you unravel a scale. But it's a good thing to do two, three, let go of two, and watch your arm coming under like this. So I'm letting go of the finger below the transitional finger where the thumb passes. Little rotation here. Here I can actually hold all three notes down because it doesn't put any stress on my hand or arm. And it, see like this, loop around, loop around. There's a loop around here, a loop around. At the end, I let my thumb go a little bit forward. And that's because I don't want a crashing thumb. The thumb is the shortest finger and it tends to interrupt the smoothness and the seamlessness of the scale. Because of its shortness, it often falls down too hard. So when you come down, I'll just ripple through a little quicker. You'll notice that I play softer on my thumb. I think of it as a feather. Light thumb, light thumb, light thumb, and forward. I forget cadence. Now for the left hand, you can also do some blocking like this. You can play your thumb, a two, three, let go of the two, let go of the three, four, and you just let your arm float you down. Little rotation, back up. We just have a loop around here, loop around, loop around, loop around. So fun. So that's a little bit of blocking techniques that I use. The other thing I do is I do rhythms. Well, the good thing about the rhythms is that it gives you some delay time so that your thumb can start thinking of advancing itself to where it's going, such as this. The dot in a 16th rhythm. I'm going forward with my wrist to loosen up my arms. what I call the sighing pairs, you know, sighing like sighing, S-I-G-H. And that would be the feeling of doing this. You're level with the keys, but you're leaning on the first of two notes. So it would be like eighth note pairs. Issue with uh, contrary motion is where what you're doing with your head. 
um, you have pretty good peripheral vision, most people, for two octaves. It's the third octave that goes off the radar screen. You have to choose how you feel more comfortable looking either at the right hand slightly tilting your head um, when you get to the last octave, or if you're more comfortable slightly tilting your head toward the left hand last octave. I've, I've played around with both. Um, most of the time I look at my left hand. So I'm going to ripple through this and you'll watch, I don't know if you can probably not see my head on this video, I'll go a little closer. Another thing is to roll into the scale. Roll into the... I want a nice, soft cadence, smooth, soft. And if you want to use a little more wrist motion to sort of get little waves of sound, you would let your wrist ply this more as this way. With a little bit more waves in it than just a flat sound, but that's all right. Start with the flatter sound and then to get stability and smoothness. Now if you do staccato, you want to think legato, as I've said in my last video, and just snip the ends of your fingers. Say playing soft and roll into. Roll into. different dynamics and the dynamics come from the arm weight not from anything else not finger poking or finger strength you would just lean more into let's say about what I do. Now the other thing that helps contrary motion is as you get to the last octave that's off the radar screen that you go toward the instrument. That actually makes it come closer to you, believe it or not. So I'm going to show you what I do. If I'm sitting upright, Sure, crescendo, de crescendo. The crescendos are soft, louder, and then come back in soft. So start soft to get louder, and then gradually come back in to a diminuendo. So you have. Staccato can do the same thing. Of course, it's always harder. To stay connected in a staccato, you don't want to do things like this. You can see that your thumb is your guide, and if it's going a little ahead of itself, it's taking the rest of the fingers as a family with it. So think of a family of fingers. Think of the thumb being the leader, getting you around the thumb to the family of fingers. So let's see if we can do a staccato, crescendo, decrescendo, staying very close to the keys, thinking legato, and snipping the ends of the fingers. So that's pretty much what I do with um, contrary motion scales. I hope this helps. Blocking helps, rhythms help, um, sense of Panamining what you do, hanging arms, relaxed arms, 
transfer weight. 